Okay, hi, mommies. I am now with Dylan. Uh, and uh, once again, Dylan, thank you so much for gracing us. This will be very helpful for my fellow Filipino moms who are aspiring to work from home. So thank you. I know you're super busy. <laughs> so I appreciate your time. So um, no worries. Right Thanks. Okay, so for those who don't know yet, uh, Dylan is a founder and director of three online businesses, and he is my client for almost 11 months. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Dylan? <laughs> Time flies. Yeah, it's gone really fast, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Definitely. Okay, so these questions, I kind of gather all of them and then compiled all of them together. So these are the top questions that most of our, our, our Filipino moms have asked. You know, just to see a client point of view so we want to hear it from the clients themselves so see what they think about it so without further ado let's start with our first question okay so mm -hmm. Dylan what would make you hire a newbie with no experience at all or will you mm -hmm. ever hire sure so I mean when I'm hiring for any task I never really expect them to have experience unless it's something that would require that so like for example, uh, if I'm hiring a salesperson, I want them to have some experience doing sales in the past because that way they're going to be able to carry out that task much easier, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm hiring for a task that I've created and it doesn't really have um, a, a certain position or certain knowledge and experience that is required, I'm just looking for someone that is good at working and, and knows how to use a computer and can just follow instructions that I lay out. And then I'm not worried if they have experience doing something similar before. It's more about whether they can carry out the task that I'm laying out right now. Um, and the way I would usually do that is just with a test task. So what I'll do uh, is interview applicants. And then after I've spoken to them on a call, I'll give them a test task to see how well they achieve whatever benchmark I set in this test task and then hire them based on that. Not so much their past experience. I might look at mm. uh, testimonials if there are any, but if there aren't any testimonials or past work on their profile, I'm not really worried about about that I'm worried about who they are as a person and whether they can do the job that I'm after great so guys as you can see <laughs> Dylan is more about the attitude <laughs> okay so number yeah. two is what makes an, an applicant stand out for you because I, I'm mm. pretty sure you're getting hundreds if not thousands of applicants when you post online yeah yeah for sure so the first thing is just little mistakes here and there if i if i ask for a certain question to be answered on a job post if that's not answered when they reply that's the first thing i look at if they answer that wrong then i'm not going to talk to them at all um, there's no point so you have to have all of these little screening points in place mm -hmm. because there's so many people applying i don't want to waste my time with people if they're going to fail even the smallest thing so first i have that i have questions in my job post that they need to answer it doesn't they don't need to answer them perfectly they just need to like see them and answer them and then they can move to the next stage of chatting on the whatever the might be upwork or freelance.com uh, people per hour or whatever yeah. um and then i'll chat to them and then i'll have a chat see what kind of rates they would like like how much they um, would charge how many hours they have available mm. just seeing whether they meet some basic specifications for the role and what i'm looking for then if they do meet those specifications then i will jump on a call with them so basically i'm just weeding out people that don't fit my criteria as mm. i go through all of the steps of the hiring process um what makes them stand out i mean i don't really I, I guess what makes people stand out is just answering questions really in the, in, the, in the beginning or like responding to the job post properly and showing that they looked at the job post and read it because so many applicants just apply to every yeah. job post they see. And I can see that straight away. I can see when you copy and paste uh, yep. a response. It's very obvious and it's completely, it doesn't look good at all. And I already kind of don't want to talk to you just based <laughs> on copy and pasting, you know what I mean? Like, and I understand like it, it, it's um, time consuming applying for all these jobs, right? So it feels easy to copy and paste, but it feels completely fake. And it feels like, oh, I'm, I have no interest in what you're saying. I can see that you're just saying the same thing to everyone. And even <laughs> if you are doing that, at least, at least edit it a little bit. Edit your template <laughs> to make it more relevant to what I'm saying and respond to what I'm saying in my job post. Then I'll talk to you further from there. Yeah. I, think that's the biggest I remember thing your I job post was so long. Like I had to read mm. it several times. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I make it very long. So then the, the people that read through the bottom will get the questions at the bottom yeah. and then they'll respond to the questions. And I know they read all the way to the bottom. And those are the kind of people I want. I want people that actually diligently look at the details because if someone's not looking at the details, then they're not going to do good work for me. Exactly. Right. So no, mom, mom's number one tip is never use a templated cover letter. 
Okay, so third question is, what made you decide to outsource and hire Filipino freelancers? As, as I already know, you're not just hiring Filipinos, but, but what made you think that Filipinos can be a good a team, team members? Like Filipinos in general just have a really great reputation, I think, in the online community. Everyone's always like, oh, Filipino workers are the best <laughs> workers. They work really hard and, and they're diligent and all of that kind of thing. So you already have a good reputation in the, the job marketplace. So you're already kind of in a really good position just compared to everyone else. You know what I mean? Just by yeah. being from the Philippines. So you're already good to go there. Um, <laughs> that, that's why it's really just their reputation. Everyone talks about it. Everyone says they're the best. So. Oh, that's nice. So when did you hear about a virtual assistant or online freelancing and became aware they even existed when you were just starting out? Well, for me, I, I do online business, right? So mm -hmm. it kind of goes hand in hand. I can't work with uh, people that don't work online, right? Because yeah. I have an online business. So it was kind of, uh, it wasn't really a thing that I found out about. I just, I can't even remember when I heard about it, but it was mm -hmm. kind of the same moment where I learned about online business, I suppose, because as soon as you learn that you can do online business, you learn that you can hire workers online too. And I can't hire workers in any other place except online. So. Great. Okay, so this is similar to the questions I had uh, previously, but if you find a candidate with the less than the credentials you require, what would make you hire him or her? So for me, it's all about like, first of all, their personality. Uh, after I have a call with them, talk to them, kind of get a vibe and a feel for who they are. Um, and if I like them or if I like them more and they have, don't have amazing credentials and I feel like they could be a good worker, then I'm likely to give them that test task and move them to the next stage. Yeah. More so than if I talk to someone on the call, I don't like them, I get a bad vibe from them and mm -hmm. they have all of the credentials, I'm probably not going to hire them. So likability is really, really essential. And just, and just coming off with the right qualities and values of, of hard work, being diligent, um, mm -hmm. being like focused and engaged on the task. And I feel like they're going to be a good worker. It's just kind of a feeling that you get when you're having mm -hmm. a, a talk with someone. Um, so that's more important to me than looking at their profile and their credentials. Great. So like, it's like a gut feel. So, so um, in, in re relevance to that, um, how important is communication skills in an applicant for you? Oh, it's so important. I mean, I'm, I can't work with anyone that's bad at communication. They need, and the thing is, well, because we're working online, it's very, very important that they're very responsive. Like, they need to be at least replying once every day. You know, I mean, if I if they wait more than twenty four hours to reply to me, I think something is wrong. And like, something mm -hmm. better be wrong. You know, what I mean, like they, they <laughs> have a family thing that they had to do, or like um, they they lost their phone or something like that. Because um, with with this type of business, you need to be on the ball with my clients. So I need to make sure that my team is as dedicated as I am when it comes to handling client issues and being responsive to clients. So if my team isn't responsive to me and doesn't communicate well with me, I know they're going to do the same thing with the clients, which is definitely not what I want, right? So yeah. it's essential. I think it's the most important thing that communication ability. Well, one of them, one of the most important things. Yeah. Right. I, ha I agree with you on that. So um, do you ever check your candidates' social media accounts? No, I don't. I, um, I usually just check their profile. Um, I never really go deeper than that because I'm going to find out, you know, I mean, I'm going to find out what kind of person they are just by working with them, just by, because the system, we use hub stuff as well. So we can yeah. see how well they're working just based on the statistics on hub stuff. I can see what mistakes they make. I can see if they fail the test tasks. I can see if they slack off. I can, I can see if they do anything that negatively impacts the work that they're doing with me when they're doing the work. So I would rather just jump into it. If I get a good feel for someone, I'm not going to research their background and look deep into the internet. I don't really have time for that. I just want to give them the test task, see if they're good at the job. They get the job if they're good at it. If they make too many mistakes, move on to the next person. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. So what do you think are the challenges of working remotely or having a team that works remotely? It's definitely the communication thing, you know, because we're all online and so the, the, the technology that we have available to us is amazing and allowing us to communicate really yeah. easily with one another. Um, but if we're not using that technology properly, then there's no point having it, right? So it's so essential yeah. that we're communicating well because we're not in the office together. We can't just say, hey, um, walk to the next desk yeah. over and just have a discussion. We need to be responding to each other's messages constantly. And we need to feel like we're, we're all together and we're all replying to one another and we're all on 
online. You know, that's why it's called being online. You have to be online and be ready to respond to anything that comes up. Because if you're not responsive, that means that you're not being diligent in your work and you're not going to be able to respond to any negative situations that come up that need to be handled. And it really depends as well on the level of difficulty of the, the task, right? Like mm -hmm. if they're dealing directly with clients, managing projects, it's so essential that they're communicating really well and they're always on the ball in terms of every single step that is happening and they know what's going on right yeah. now with the projects, et cetera. Um, if they're doing a more simple task, it's not as big of a deal, you know, if they're just kind of uh, doing data entry or, yeah. or in the lead generation, something like that, it's not so essential. Um, but I still, I still want that communication. It's still essential and that can be difficult sometimes, right? Like you'll get yeah. some people that won't communicate well and it's just a, a complete deal breaker because it's so so essential and it's always the biggest challenge I think yeah. with this online business stuff it's like you're always wondering what happened to this person if he or she stopped responding yeah yeah exactly yeah okay so it's there an applicant you ever regret not hiring why mm, no this never happened because like I don't they're not, they're not really a person to me you know what I mean they're just a number on the screen so like I don't I don't not hire someone and then go oh I should have hired that person because I don't know they might have been bad they might have been good but I'm never going to find out because I yeah. didn't hire them but I can't regret hiring them you know what I mean like or or maybe uh, if they go further down into the process and I have multiple options and I hire someone and then that person doesn't turn out to be the right option mm -hmm. I've probably already forgotten about who the other yeah. options were <laughs> I'm constantly yeah. hiring I'm seeing so many people that I see good and bad and none, none are like amazingly standing out during the hiring process because they might seem like they're going to be really good and then not mm -hmm. be good. They might seem like they're going to be average and they turn out to be really good. So you never know. So that's why I don't really have any regrets about not hiring anyone because I don't know if they were going to be good or not, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, so what would make you automatically reject an application? You kind of talked about it earlier already. Yeah, exactly. So if they if they miss some certain benchmarks or they don't hit these certain screens that I have during that hiring process, then that makes me get rid of them. And it's all come it all comes down to just being diligent, you know, doing doing yeah. diligence, like reading through everything, being detail oriented, and and cog like being cognitive, thinking about things is is so important. You know, a lot of people don't think about the details and they don't come up with the right answers, or they don't come up with any answers at all because they didn't even notice that it was an important yeah. thing to answer things like that. Um, it's, it's just so essential that people um, are responding to your job posts in the right way from the beginning. I think that's the most important thing because that's the thing that people fail at most often is yeah. just not responding properly to a job post. And then from there, um, just like, like on the call itself, um, you want to just be friendly, mm. outgoing, uh, and seem like you're a hard worker, seem like you're going to be a good worker, and then you're pretty much good to go. Cool. So I don't know if you can answer this, but how many Fil Filipino freelancers have you worked with so far? And why do you like um, work? Uh, you already answered the, the, the next question. Like, why do you like working with Filipinos? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like we, Filipinos already have a great reputation, like I was saying before. Um, I mean, I've just enjoyed working with them in general. I have a lot of Filipino freelancers at the moment. I have, oh, I'm not sure, not sure how many right now. Um, at one point, I had seven or I think yeah. seven or nine or something like that. Um, at least at the moment. Um, but yeah, most most of our freelancers are Filipino, um, and then there's a few other countries in the mix, but primarily Filipino. Okay, cool. So what's one advice that you can give to aspiring Filipino freelancers or especially moms like me who are looking into working at home? Um, I think the most important thing is just with the job process when you are applying to jobs, make sure that you're replying pro like you're applying properly, like responding to the job post, reading through it, reading into the detail, answering any questions, then going into the interview process, just being honest about who you are and what you can contribute and just trying to stand out with, with certain things. Like, for example, in your response, tell them a little bit about yourself. Tell them why you'd actually be a good option for this job post and why you're excited about it. Um, because those are the kinds of things that will stand out. Most people, when they're applying to a job, they're just kind of rambling on about what they've um, done before their experience. Okay. So I'm not really talking yes. about how they feel. 
a, yeah, yeah. Like you want to talk a little bit more about your feelings um, and, and what you can do. Cause I want to know what you can do for me. And I want to know if you actually want to do this job or it's just like a random job you're trying to make money doing. And I'd always rather hire someone that feels like they're interested in the work at least, yeah. or just interested in, in the fact that they're going to be able to just work on online or on the internet. That's cool as well to me. So I want to hire people that are more excited about the work and if that can come if that can come through in your job applications, then that's going to help a lot. Yeah, that's cool. So what are the tips that actually you already d said this? <laughs> Some of my mm. questions are repetitive, Dylan. <laughs> what are the pretty, tips that you can give? <laughs> yeah, it's like you answered most of them already, even at the first question. <laughs> so what are no, the can get tips different that angles. you can give for applicants with no experience in this field? Yeah. So yeah, like I was saying, experience to me isn't as essential. Um, but of course you can just apply for the more generalist jobs in the beginning. Like if you don't have an experience in a certain skill or a certain um, knowledge area or qualifications or anything, just apply for the more generalist jobs and then just build up from there. You'll get more experience over time. You can just apply for the entry level jobs in the beginning, work your way up the ladder of different tasks, improve your skills, look for things that are kind of opportunities to improve your skills as well. Um, and often, I mean, you're going to be earning a little bit less than the more experienced freelancers do but over time you'll be able to um, get a command a higher price for what you're offering just because of your experience and your skill uh, but in the beginning just be willing to take some of those entry-level positions and um, work hard do well and then you're going to get some good referees and as soon as you have some good references um, some good experience and testimonials from past clients you're going to be able to get work really easily in the future so I really agree with you on that because sometimes, sometimes we just think of getting the job right away, and some some people are too concerned about the rate that um, yeah. it, instead of you know offering what they can offer to the client. So that that's mm. a really good one. And that mm. ends our question, <laughs> Dylan. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure how long it took, but again, thank you so much. We really appreciate that and, and I'm very sure that this um, video can help um, a lot of online, free, uh, I mean, aspiring Filipina moms to become home-based workers, especially for their family, so they can work mm. well, well looking after the kids, just like I do. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you once yeah, again. Helped. Any last, last words? Do you have anything else to say? Last words, yeah. No, no, I think we hit all of the main points, did pretty well there. But um, if anyone has any questions, you can comment on the post and you can relay any questions back to me if you want. So, yeah, I sure will. I'll do that. Okay, thank you again, Dylan, and Cheers. I shall go back to work. <laughs> Have fun. Bye. Okay, bye bye.